it's a cold winter morning in Calcutta. Kolkata, as they call it these days. But some things never change. Not in Kolkata. The smog. No, fog is a better word. More romantic. Concealing. Revealing. And the trams moving like shadows scurrying home at daybreak. And me? I am following my nose all the way from Canada, seeking garlic, red peppers, soya and sesame oil. And someone larger than life. Mmm. Breakfast in Calcutta's Chinatown on a Sunday morning. Sun Yat-sen Street, named after China's very own Mahatma Gandhi. Among the Chinese, no matter what the political persuasion may be, everybody swears by Dr. Sun Yat-sen. I guess it's the same everywhere. You almost wonder where to begin. Maybe this is a good place to begin my search for Fat Mama. I used to remember we had a market here before Porta Court was built. We had a market here. We used to go and buy her soup, stir fry with vegetable or, and uh, um, chicken, chicken julienne. And she used to uh, cook that uh, rice noodles in soup. And it, only, it, it cost only four annas. We used to have that four annas, one soup bowl, one bowl. And that was for breakfast. And it tasted very good. I always remember that. Outside, there's a hint of excitement in the air. Prawn wafers getting their suntans in time for the Chinese New Year ahead. And a gaggle of children preparing for the big day. That little girl is Hua Mulan, named after a legendary female warrior. Hua Mulan is also the name of the group. But Mr. Tung and Mr. Tsin are pensive. One is of Hakka origin, an ex-vice principal. The other, a Cantonese furniture maker, together in Calcutta's melting walk. China was not like before. Before we have so many children on the road, so much life, they chase each other, they fight, they make noise. When you see the ice cream wala coming, then you see how they run after him and then take out the money trying to grab the first one before the other gets. And it is such a joy to see all this. But now where are they? The children are still there, but in smaller numbers than ever. It's the same with the family-run Chinese eatery. The population of the Chinese in Calcutta is indeed down. Down from the days when they came through China and Hong Kong to India by ship, simply from one British colony to another. Down from a peak of nearly 50,000 to less than 5,000 today. There's great street food in Calcutta's Chinatown even today. Aspiring fat mamas too. But the real fat mama, there's no one quite like her. Take the case of fat mama. She was really fat and she behaved like a mama. Whenever anybody goes to the cooking, you can see her just sitting in front of the stove. There's no kitchen. She cook very nicely and especially when she cook, it's not only to your, for the stomach, also for your mind. Like Fat Mama, this Chinese newspaper closed down one morning a few years ago, never to open again. 
हमको अफसोस है ये छपा खाना में इंडिया होता है बहुत सबसे पुराना अभी सिक्सटी फाइव ये हो गया अभी बच्चा लोग चीना लोग का पढ़ने नहीं मांगता है सब तो हिंदी में और इंग्लिश में अभी हम लोग चाइनीज का जो लेखका लोग जो लेखका लेखकी लोग वो लोग भी इंडिया लाने नहीं मांगता है वो लोग सब चला गया कनाडा अमेरिका ऑस्ट्रेलिया वो सब का खुशी है इसीलिए तो हम लोग छपा खाना भी नहीं चलाने सकता है वन ऑफ द टाइप सेटर्स नाउ विदाउट जॉब स्टिल विजिट्स द प्रेस टू फीड द फिश and just to be with his type family a large family quite a bunch of characters the only chinese newspaper to survive comes out of this printing press without a sound it is completely handwritten every morning using chinese calligraphy then photocopied and distributed by the end of the day it is published in tangra calcutta's other china town built over land reclaimed from mosquito infested swamps over 100 years ago today the industry is compelled to move again environmental concerns tangra is also the home of fancy restaurants large sauce factories and a host of small industries maybe that's why tangra has high walls steel gates and some rather large padlocks maybe that's why mr lee kasyong tangra's leading feng shui expert is so busy at new year's time mr lee is more than 80 years old but for him some memories are as vivid as yesterday as i prod him gingerly 以前中国间，一个中石南八门，印度人也飞，五五五门，是反正中国发展皮薄啊。呃，这个买个炒饭炒面，又便宜又多又十分出名，当然就对了。Back in the good old Chinatown in the heart of the city, things other than food are warming up. Yet another male preserve has been broken by an old woman dragon dance group, the Huamu Lan. Uh, during the time of war, her, each family was supposed to send one male member for the war. But in Famla's family, only male member was her father. He was really old. So what she does is she disguises herself as a male of the family and she goes for the war. and she has a very important role to play in uh, winning the war for china and it is only later on that they find out that she's a girl so this is uh, basically we draw our inspiration from her and that's how her name has been has come about we are probably the only women's group in the world at the mahjong clubs of calcutta's chinatown the legendary female warrior would be just as pleased with the spirit of combat it keeps the elderly so alert so focused so competitive but one conflict that nobody was prepared for changed everything one morning in 1962 the indo china war as the two giant neighbors and one time friends battled it out in the mountains An unspoken human tragedy unfolded in Calcutta and other Indian cities where the Chinese lived. Thanks to the defense of India rules and two words that can so easily be misused: national interest, Chinese schools, Chinese newspapers, and many Chinese business establishments were forced to shut down. even those chinese with indian nationality were not spared mera naam hai mr lu yu sen aaj hum bol raha jo hum 62 mein insisti hua aap pata de ga duniya mein matlab malum hoga mera safa kya hua mera pita ji indian citizenship aur hum 
बॉर्न इन बर्फ इन इंडिया ऑल्सो हमें लेता था शिलोंग में ड्यू टू चाइना एंड इंडिया वॉर में हुआ था पुलिस आके पूरा हमारा फैमिली उठा के लेके गया और कोई इंफॉर्मेशन पहले फिर हम लोग को कोई खबर ही नहीं भेजा ऐसा हो करके लेके किया जेल खाना में शेलोंग से लेके गया राजस्थान साठ रोड का ट्रेन का ऊपर रास्ता है राशन हम लोग को दिया मगर खाने को पकाने को टाइम नहीं दिया पूरा और रास्ता में गाड़ी जो रोका पकाने का टाइम में खाना भी पकाए पक नहीं हुआ जो स्टार्ट हो गया बड़ा गाड़ी आओ चलो इसी से आधा कच्चा खा दिया राजस्थान चार सात दिन में राय गया और बाद में हम लोग को रिलीज हुआ 1966 और है हम लोग पूरा फैमिली का ऊपर हमको तीस रुपया ऊपर से पैसा दिया रास्ता खाने को मगर रास्ते में सोचिए एक स्टेशन में एक आदमी एक मेंबर के लिए डेढ़ रुपया खाना और कूड़ी भाड़ा हम लोग चल गया सोलह सत्रह रुपया ऊपर और बाकी रुपया तो हम लोग पूरा खाना पैक में नहीं होता है इसी से हम लोग बहुत तकलीफ से पहुँचा गुवाहाटी टू रोड तीन रोड में हमको खाना नहीं मिला क्यों थोड़ा बहुत रुपया जो मिला था बचा था हम बल बच्चा को पहले दिया पूरी खाने को जो हम शेलोंग में वापस आया तो हम जन दिया गवर्नमेंट हमको हम मेरा प्रॉपर्टी ऑप्शन हो चुका इट वॉज वेरी ट्राइंग वी ट्राइड नॉट नॉट हैव दिस अगेन बिकॉज वी वो वेरी स्केर डेट यू विल बी टेकन बैक टू राजस्थान एंड यू वो सेंग दैट इफ यू गो टू राजस्थान we will have to start all over again we won't have anything no food no drink no no clothes no nothing so he saying uh, some people will also come and take us out away in the middle of the night so we were very scared since the day i was born i remember the life was very smooth we feel wanted we were somebody in this land but then came the shock in 62 after that day that year that incident we were no more feeling the same as before we heard a lot of thing about people are being taken to rajasthan camp uh, who was in the border area we are not allowed to move out anywhere even to howrah station or to damdam or to any place but we have to need a permit for that the incident that create most fear is picking up in the midnight they come at midnight and catch people and take them away and many of them to us they are very innocent people very good people this make many people begin to feel this is not the place for them anymore they begin to look for new pasture most indian chinese headed for toronto maybe opportunity maybe the familiar trams this supermarket is owned by an indian chinese My name is David. I came to Canada in 1979 from Calcutta, India, and I I have ever since I have stayed in, in Canada. I only been back to India once. Most of our customers are Indian Chinese from India, and we have a lot of uh, Indian people from India too shopping here. This is a tandoori chicken, uh, and then Indian Chinese people they love to come here to buy these things, and we have different variety. All you have to do is grill it, and it's ready. David's brother Ivan practices holistic Chinese medicine in Toronto. Ivan treats all kinds of aches and pains and other ailments. But some hurts don't heal easily. During 1962 that time I'm still young but I still remember at that time when the people uh, when China and India have a war Then we have a lots of trouble. You have to have a work permit to go out of the the tangra. Then we have not allowed to go. Twenty four hours living at home. I have to, to be at home. That time I finished the welding school in Indian Oxygen. I go to Garden Ridge. I can't even get, even can get inside to get an interview. I just only show my the diploma and everything. Sit for two hours. 
Then they come and say, yo, Chinese, no, I'm sorry. At the annual picnic of the Indian Chinese Association in Toronto, you can meet lawyers, teachers, technicians, and some very articulate senior citizens. I was 24 when the Indian-China border conflict in 1962. The Chinese people in India is very difficult. They cannot move around in the city. And all the Chinese have to apply for the permission to stay. Every year, you have to go to the office to apply the, the, the call the security office to apply for the permit to stay in India for extension. As usual, the last word belongs to a lawyer. In my view, any war uh, where there are people being persecuted and anyone who's being treated differently would fall in my definition as being unjust. I don't believe my people want monetary compensation, but my people want um, a, an acknowledgement by not just the Indian government, but just by the Indians to know that we formed a part of that community at the time when we were living over there. And we also made a positive contribution, not just to the economy, but also to the cultural fabric of Calcutta. There are some very pleasant memories too like the memory of a woman selling noodles in Calcutta's Chinatown. Oh, yes, I remember Fat Mama. And uh, she's our favorite place to go. You know, in India, uh, it's very hot, I remember. In the nighttime, you know, we I always that's a good place to go. And uh, the eating place is open. And there's no roof, no shelter, you know. It's open. She cooked those, uh, what, um, Chicken rice noodle soup is delicious, you know. That's Hakka style, you know. They the put the spice. And still today, I am mean, I always looking for this kind of a food, you know. But I miss a lot. The most powerful link remains Hindi cinema. Back in the sunshine of Calcutta's Chinatown, the Chinese New Year is fast approaching. Most important on the shopping list are lettuce leaves to feed the dragons. New Year is also a time for generosity and for hope. Chinese-Indian relations have improved. Um, Chiang Zuming uh, from China has visited us uh, Indians here. And Sonia Gandhi also visited China um, a while ago. And uh, Li Peng, his, uh, his wife also came to Calcutta, India and went to Agra. Uh, Taj Mahal and they had um,
taken uh, their photographs there. So we know our Chinese Indian relations have improved uh, much, much more since 1962. Come New Year's Day, and the dragons are out in the streets in force, gleefully devouring lettuce and gifts of cash. Night, the dragon dance groups take the stage. Once again, there's a Huamulan girls who steal the show. Everything begins and ends at the old Chinese temple in Achipur, where the first Chinese came to Calcutta over 200 years ago. Fat Mama is no more. She is probably in a Chinatown somewhere above, still making those heavenly noodles. And the Chinese, like trams in Calcutta, are going, going, going. But not gone.